The transfer window is always an exciting time for any Manchester United fan. Who will be brought into the club? Who will leave the club? How will the squad look like at the end of the transfer window? And this January is no different. While Ole Gunnar Solskjaer doesn't expect anybody to be signed in this January, if the right player is available for the right price, Manchester United will sign them. Simple as that. Who could that be? I'll discuss that later in the video. But what I want to run through before that is a few transfer deals I actually expect to happen in January from Manchester United and give my opinions and thoughts on that. I want to hear from you as well as always in the comments and so make sure you get involved down below. But if you are new to the channel, as always, make sure you subscribe down there, hit the notifications bell, join the United People's TV community. It's great, but let's get straight into the video. So to the first piece of transfer activity I expect to see from United in January, and that is Matteo Darmian joining Juventus on loan. Darmian is widely expected to join Juventus on loan. Romeo Agresti, a respected Italian journalist, has said that Darmian will join Juventus initially on a loan deal until the end of the season, and also they will have a buy option in that deal. And it would see United receive a fee of between one to two million euros for the loan deal, and potentially up to €8 million Euros on top of that if he were to join the Serie A champions this summer. Now, for all clubs involved in this, this is a fantastic deal. If United can somehow recoup the majority of, I think it was £12 million or something we spent on Darmian, that's a hell of a transfer bit of activity, seriously. And United have been so bad at selling players in the past, that would be fantastic. But for Darmian himself, it will be a big move in the right direction in his career because you look at Darmian's United career, when he arrived... I thought, Christ, we've actually signed a proper right back here. And he was brilliant. I think it was up until Arsenal away where we got pumped 3-0, with 3-0 down very early on in that game. Darmian was abysmal and I'm not sure he ever really recovered. Fell out of favour under Van Howe. Mourinho never really had too much faith in him. Played brilliantly in the Europa League final against Ajax. I think it was a left back. But overall, his United career has been massively disappointing. But all credit to Darmian because, you know, despite the fact that he's made a handful of appearances over the last two years, you've never heard Darmian say a bad word about any manager, anything to do with the club. He's just got his head down and carried on. He really has acted completely professionally throughout all of this. And that's why for me, I want this deal for him to go to Juventus to go through for him himself. Go back to his native Italy. He'll enjoy it there. He'll be at Juventus, the biggest club in Italy, playing with Ronaldo, winning Serie A. Fair play to Darmian. Now, I want to see that deal absolutely go through because Darmian shouldn't be playing left or right back for United anymore. So that needs to go through. Now, the next deal would see Scott McTominay join Celtic on loan. BBC reported that Celtic were in talks for a McTominay loan deal. And since then, an injury to Mauro and Fellaini has put question marks over whether or not Man United should hold on to McTominay, keep him in the squad or let him go and join Celtic. For McTominay, it's been a bit of a strange 12 months, I suppose. He's for me, he ended up being Mourinho's full guy. You know, it was an academy player brought through, given a ton of minutes, but I almost felt like Mourinho might have been using McTominay against the club. Oh, look, I'm playing a youth player. Look at me. More than him being a top quality academy player coming through and deserving the minutes. McTominay has had good performances for United. Not sure whether he's United quality, though. So I think for him, going to Celtic right now, major club, Going there and playing first team regular football is what he needs in his career. And for United, Matomane's place in the squad was, what was it, fourth, fifth choice central midfielder, something like that. I would rather see Pereira or Fred get the minutes ahead of Matomane, so I don't think we need to stunt his career by keeping him in the squad just in case we get more injuries. I would rather see Matomane go out to Celtic on loan and maybe thrive there. Who knows, maybe come back to United in the future. But for Matomane and his career, a loan deal for him to join Celtic in January would be a massively good move, and I hope that happens. So those two deals would see McTominay join Celtic on loan and Darmian join Juventus on loan. And the third bit of transfer business that I want to see United do is in-house. And I want to see United get that new contract signed by Anthony Martial. Reports in France this weekend suggested that Man United were close to finally agreeing terms on a five-year contract that will keep Martial at the club until 2024. Now this has been going on for some time. Negotiations have been going to and fro and you can understand why. Martial looking in, he's got Mourinho who's a manager who didn't really trust him completely and he's got a club that looks slightly in disarray but now it looks completely different. United are playing the United way under Solskjaer 
And Martial, while he's not thriving in the same way that Pogba and Rashford are, we're playing a style of football that will bring the best and most out of him. I definitely think that his positioning and his movement has improved under Solskjaer. The final product's not there, but keeping him at the club is a major, major thing that United need to do. I think Martial has the ability to become a top five player in the world in the future. He's got all the talent there. Some players use it, like Kylian Mbappe. Some players don't use it. But Martial has shown in his first season and in plenty of other times at United that he's got the talent. And I want to see him stay at the club for as long as possible. Because for me, looking at this squad going forward, Pogba's crucial. De Gea's crucial. Rashford's crucial. And I do think Martial is crucial to it as well. An absolutely devastating winger on his day. We need to keep him in this squad and this team going forward. So for him to sign a new contract, not as major as De Gea signing a new contract a while ago, but he's a key component for me. And it would be a massive, massive move from United in the right direction. So getting Martial to sign that new contract, letting McTominay and Darmian leave on loan, the fourth thing that I want to see happen is David De Gea signing that new contract. Multiple reports have said that De Gea is happy to commit his future to the club, but wants parity as the club's top earner, who is currently Alexis Sanchez on £350,000 a week. Pay the money, pay all the money in the world, pay double that if David De Gea wants it. Man United cannot afford to let De Gea go. And this isn't just because of his heroics against Spurs, it's because in the last five years since Fergie retired, David De Gea has carried this club has stopped this club falling a lot further than it has fallen. He's won Player of the Year in four out of five seasons. That's unheard of. Not even Ronaldo did that in his pump. De Gea is an outstanding, for me, the best goalkeeper in the world at shot stopping. And what do you want your goalkeeper to do? Stop shots going in the goal. Therefore, De Gea is the best in the world. United need to pay whatever De Gea wants. For me, he's shown a hell of a lot of loyalty to the club to still be here. He's been through Moyes, he's been through Van Howe, he's been through Mourinho, and now he, he's at Solskjaer. His fifth manager at the club, and De Gea is still here. United need to pay whatever De Gea wants, and he absolutely deserves to be the club's top earner, because he is the club's probably most important player. Irreplaceable, completely irreplaceable. So United need to get that deal over the line, but the reports suggest that De Gea is happy, he just wants that parity on paper. And he's certainly worth it more than Alexis Sanchez is. Let's be honest. So if United can get De Gea to sign a new deal and Martial tie down two of our best players to new long-term deals, let Darmian leave on loan to Juventus and McTominay leaving on loan to Celtic, that's four transfer activities that I'd like to see happen. But the fifth one, the elusive new centre-back. This is the one signing that I wanted, that all of us wanted to happen in January. And yeah, you know, it's difficult to complete major transfers like that in January. But Liverpool managed to break their record, 75 million they spent on Virgil van Dijk. So players are there, it's just, are they available? And that's the crux of it all. I want United to sign Kalidou Koulibaly. I've made that abundantly clear. I think he can be the leader in this defence that we so desperately need. But is he available in January? Now, Napoli are out of the Champions League. Obviously, going for it and Serie A, maybe not. But money talks, and I still think that if United went in big for Koulibaly, we could get Koulibaly, but that's by the by. Maybe United are waiting to not sign any players under a caretaker manager. Maybe they feel that they want security of having a permanent manager in place before investing any more money. But the way I look at it, Koulibaly is good enough that no matter who comes in as our manager next, whether that's Solskjaer keeping the job, Pochettino coming in, Zidane, Jardim, Simeone, oh God. Koulibaly's good enough to be the defensive leader in all of those teams, under all of those managers. He's good enough that any manager in the world would want him. And maybe that's exactly why Napoli won't let him go in January. But if they'll let him go in the summer, they'd let him go in January too. Just might cost a little bit more money. But that's my own take. You might disagree, but for me, Koulibaly, I would still love to see United. What have we got? Less than two weeks left in the transfer window. That's enough time for United to go after him. Why not? Solskjaer has nailed it so far. Seven wins from seven. United are riding high at the moment. Drop Koulibaly into that. Maybe we'll be riding even higher. So those four deals, McTominay on loan to Celtic, Darmian on loan to Juventus, United getting... Martial and De Gea tied down to new long-term contracts. They would be four, for me, very smart and brilliant 
deals for United. For McTominay, it helps his career. For Darmian, it's what he deserves after being so professional in the last couple of years. And making sure that Martial and De Gea stay at the club, huge, huge thing. But Koulibaly, bringing him in now, for me, could transform that defence. We saw the fragilities against Brighton. They're always going to be there. Now, maybe some will agree with the club and say, look, don't sign any players unless we're under a permanent manager. Don't let a caretaker manager spend money. But I think Koulibaly is good enough that if Solskjaer keeps a job or anybody else comes in, they'll all love Koulibaly. It's not a specialist type signing like a Di Maria. But that was signed of the Van Halen. That was a terrible signing anyway. But it's not a specialist type signing like that. It's just a world-class centre-back. And every team, no matter what the style is, needs world-class centre-backs. But let me know what you think about the remainder of the transfer window. What do you want to see United do internally in terms of loan deals or new contracts with players? And would you want to see Koulibaly in? Do you think there's any chance that United will bring Koulibaly in? And if not, who else? Now, if you're new to the channel and you're still here, very good. I like that. But make sure you subscribe. Subscribe down there. Hit the notifications bell. Join the United People's TV community. Until next time, though, take it easy.